HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Hey guys, this is Gabby Douglas. If you have an active lifestyle like me, hydration is key. That's why I love the Hydration Watermelon Smoothie from Smoothie King. Blended with whole fruits, coconut water, and more electrolytes than some of the leading sports drinks, Hydration Watermelon is the cleaner way to hydrate with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. So you can recover and perform at your peak ability during the summer heat. Order online or through the app for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to enjoy inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. Everything from Inc.com to Proven, uh, People First, MSNBC's Your Business, uh, the list just keep coming, uh, and we're thrilled about that. It is really because of the guests who join me. They uh, bring their expertise, and they give it freely so that all of you can get the information that you need and want and um, apply it in your business so that you can do better things. Today is no different. My guest today is Shailene Cameron. Shailene is CEO and founder of Shailene Cameron Mentoring. After driving over a million dollars in B2C sales, managing a team of 12, and teaching everything from prospecting to client sales, Shailene quit at the top of her game. Now she helps entrepreneurs develop the mindset and habits necessary to have a high-performing business without sacrificing who they are plus what they want. Thanks so much for joining me today, Shailene. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am thrilled to have you here. Um, I I think this is, it's so interesting. We're going to be talking about boundaries and things and and getting what you want. Um, It's interesting for me because I think so many entrepreneurs don't believe that, right? They, They buy into this story that you can't have it all, that you have to pick. You're either going to have a successful business or 
a healthy personal life. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about where you come down on that. Yeah, you know, it is such an interesting topic because, like, there is this concept, right? There has to be a level of sacrifice to really, truly excel in either area of your life, which I think is baloney. And, (laughs) And so, you know, your schedule is king. Like, this just really comes down to it is you have to make time for both your business and your personal life because nobody else is going to do it for you. And I do believe that striving for balance is totally unrealistic when people kind of talk about, like, I'm looking for work-life balance. Like, I just think that is just, it's, it's, um, it's kind of like walking a tightrope, right? Like, how realistic yeah. is it to try to find that balance where you're, you're struggling on both sides? Like, instead, I really talk to my communities and my clients about the idea of counterbalance. Because, like, some days you're going to be able to sleep in, you're going to end your day at five, it's going to be short and breezy. And other days, you're going to be pulling a 14 hour day where you're tired, and you're going to feel like you're walking uphill in a snowstorm without shoes. Like, it's just that's <laughs> the situation. And you, you can have it all, but you need to prioritize in order to make that happen. And that's really where the schedule comes in. And I always say, like, if it's not scheduled, it doesn't exist. And that goes for like, if you're in a relationship, having date night with your partner, if you need a girl's night out, or if you need a boy's night out, like, it does very much need to be in your calendar and treat it, treat your personal life as a business in the sense of, you know, that you need to make it happen to find that peace and and be grounded within both areas of your life. I love this because I I think this whole, you know, balance thing is is nonsense too. And one of the things Mm -hmm. I like about it is this is, this is realistic. This is the reality of it. It's not about balance. It's about decision-making Totally. And yeah, and I and I love this scheduling, every, you know, things so that they actually are real, that they actually have that point in time when you're going to do them. Um, talk to me about boundaries. And I mean, I, I get, you know, I have two kids. I, I get boundaries. <laughs> but I, I'm also curious about why entrepreneurs are really bad at establishing them. Yeah, yeah, me too, right? This is why like <laughs> boundaries have been such a huge part of my of my life and I I I didn't learn them. Like everybody has internal boundaries, but whether we can put words to them or not is a totally different story. So the way that I like to explain boundaries is that they're they're simply what you're willing and unwilling to do both on a conscious level so that you can actively think about it and on a subconscious subconscious level where you just know you have internal boundaries that you may not necessarily vocalized, but they're there. So everyone has boundaries. Um, it just, and we know when they're crossed too, right? Like if maybe you're yeah. on the, the subway or somebody's standing too close to you, you're like, you're in this space. Or like um, maybe if a friend asks you to pick your brain up a really long work day, like these are things and, and it just kind of rubs you the wrong way. You get that visceral feeling where you're like, oh no, thank you. Um, so there are boundaries there, right? And we don't necessarily have words to put for that to, towards that unless we learn a yeah. system to be able to implement them. Um, now entrepreneurs specifically from my experience over the years is that they're, they're, they suck at setting boundaries for two reasons. One, they just have never been taught how they've never been taught how to put words to actually like coping with requests on their time, money, or energy. And B they say yes and think that being flexible is what you have to do to get ahead because that's really, I mean, most of us have had jobs, worked for corporations before we get into entrepreneurship. And that's what you're taught is that being flexible and being a yes person is what helps you climb a corporate ladder. But the thing is, is that's not what's going to make you rich as an entrepreneur. That's in fact, just going to burn you out and you're going to end up doing a lot of shit that you don't want to do for people that you may not really like. Um, So I think those are the two primary reasons, right? As to why entrepreneurs are not the greatest at setting boundaries right out the gate. Boy, that is such a great point. Yeah. I never would have thought about it that way, but it's true. We are taught when we work for somebody else that that's what we have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like ingrained in us. And yeah. and boy, ugh, as entrepreneurs, we have to really set boundaries. Yeah. Like, cause I'm working in corporate. It's like, okay, being flexible, taking on more work, saying yes, like, oh, you're a good employee. You're celebrated. But nobody looks at like when you go home and you're burnt out and you hate your job and you hate your like, you know, and those pieces of you start to kind of fall apart. It's like, and then you step into this role of entrepreneurship, whether you're entry level, whether you've like been at it for a while, there's still that piece that's like, okay, I need to say yes to more things. But then it's like, okay, well, then that's where the sacrificing of your personal life and the 
like this idea of balance and all these kind of convoluted concepts come into play, which makes it so much harder when it can be so simple. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to figure out how I want to ask you this question. So, you know, most entrepreneurs have people in their Mm -hmm. lives outside of their business. Mm -hmm. And some of those people are really supportive and some of those people are not. Mm -hmm. So how does a business owner, um, what do they do about the toxic people in their life? Like, Mm -hmm. like if they have to have them in their life, I guess my question is, how how do they set boundaries around their business so that doesn't impact them as an entrepreneur? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. So when it comes to, I mean, we're all human, right? Like we, we're going to have those people in our life, whether they're from 15 years ago or whether they've just entered our life in the last couple of weeks that may be impacting our ability to succeed, whether we realize it or not, because they're just a negative Nelly or, you know, they're just not on the same page as us. And, and really when it comes to, relationships and toxicity, whether they're a friend, a family, you know, a colleague or whoever they are. Um, it depends on the, the level of toxicity and in what capacity it's coming from. So if it's, you know, if it's friends and family and it's kind of like a one-off scenario where you have to, you know, stand your ground and have maybe have a tough conversation and then things shift, that's a different story. But if it's prolonged negativity where you just kind of have people who are dragging you down and like they're not optimistic and they're, they, they maybe think what you're doing is a little bit crazy or they're just not supportive in whatever capacity. And that can come in so many different shapes and forms, right? Like one example would be if a person says they're supportive, so their words say that they're supportive, but their behaviors tell you otherwise. As in maybe they're like frustrated or they don't like that you have to work a little bit later at night or like there's just a, there's a disconnect between their words and their behavior. Um, so that over time can really compound it and affect a person. Right. And it may mean depending on, on, you know, those of you who are listening, like it does depend on your scenario. But at the end of the day, like your environment is so, so important. And a lot of the time it means spending less time with the people that are toxic in your life and distancing yourself. Um, one of the examples I like, because the environment is so important as an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Um, and the, one of the examples I like to use, like if, if you were to think of a little person, like you have kids, Diane, and if you think of like your little ones growing up, like, and they're, say they're starting gymnastics, and they, they decide at some point, like they want to become an Olympian, they're going to be a total boss um, in that arena, and their environment, so like their coaches, the tools they learn, their parents, their friends, the relationships that they're building is going to massively impact their training regimen, their lifestyle choices, their beliefs about their abilities, like their execution. So the, the, we really need to cultivate a space of like unruly optimism in your life to maintain that consistency, to be able to get to that place of being an Olympian. And it's the same thing as when it comes to entrepreneurship, you have to be in that space and surround yourself with those types of people to be able to become a wealthy entrepreneur, become like happy, healthy, and wealthy. And wealthy can be any capacity, like whatever wealth means to you is, is, is what's important. It's just wherever you want to get to, like you're going to have to have an environment that really supports your goals. Um, and if you don't have one, it's time to cultivate one. Like go find, go find a friend, go find somebody who is into the same stuff as you. And, and also know too, Diane, this is, I think this is really important is that when you look and you find and you source out really optimistic and positive people, they're likely going to be a little bit guarded. And I'm wondering, yeah, in the sense of like, because they're protective about how positive they are, because they've, they've likely called some relationships, they've likely ended some of that toxicity and now they keep their, their circle really tight. So if you come across somebody and you're like, I really think you're an awesome person. I'd love to get to know you. Like just be aware that it's um, it takes work, like any kind of relationship, but that, people don't just become purely optimistic. They have to work at it just like anything else. That was kind of a tangent, but like, I'm pretty sure it all made sense. <laughs> yeah, but that's a great one. I'm really glad that you said it because yeah. what we wouldn't want is people going out and going, okay, I know these people and they're really positive and then approaching them and getting what they feel like is resistance yeah. and not knowing why. Cause yeah. yeah, I mean, it makes it, it really, 
uh, is a good point. So um, I want to take a quick sponsor break, and then I want to uh, dive into some other questions that I have for you. For sure. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are The Inside Track by Peter Sage and The Irresistible Consultant's Guide to Winning Clients by David A. Fields. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Shailene Cameron about the value of establishing strong boundaries so you can grow your business. Now, I want to talk to you about sales because mm -hmm. that's a, a big sweet spot for you and a big challenge <laughs> for a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I am curious, what would you say is like the number one challenge you hear mm -hmm. when entrepreneurs are learning how to sell? Great question. So, you know, the number one thing I hear is I'm not salesy. And yeah. And it's like, uh, it's the, like that needs to be taken out of every single entrepreneur, business owner's vocabulary, that statement, because it's an, ex it's an excuse, really. Like people don't like sales because they suck at them. And just like if you, if you don't like cooking, if you hate cooking, it's probably because you maybe never cook anything tasty. You know, if you don't like driving, it's probably because you're not that great at driving. Like, you're probably just not that good at it. So people really only dislike things that they're not good at. Like, I, I can think of a million things in my life right now that I don't like doing is because I'm not good at them. Um, so when you can, you know, understand what sales truly are, which is service and is relationship building, then yeah. the whole game shifts. You know, you come from a place of service of really finding out like, what is it that this client needs? What would be the most successful for them to do? If that means working with you, great. If it doesn't, cool. Like, how can you set them up? in the best capacity for them to get the results and meet the goals that they want to want to reach. So that's, that's the challenge that I hear with entrepreneurs learning how to sell is that they think they're not salesy. So they kind of opt out of the opportunity to learn them right off the hop, which is a no bueno, not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so agree with you. I, it really is remarkable um, that, they think they have to behave a certain sort of way. Like they have this belief system about selling and it's because they've experienced salespeople mm -hmm. who, who didn't understand that, that it's about service. So, so I get it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know for me, like when I have people say, I just don't want to be salesy. I say to them, thank goodness. Now <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> mm -hmm. what you can do. It's, it's yeah. be curious, you know, be, be in the discovery mode. Yeah. So, um, but I am curious yeah. about something that just popped into my head. So do you think it's true that some people are natural born salespeople and others aren't? Uh, That's no. the first part of my question. Okay, go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, I mean, if you're in business, you're a salesperson. And it, it's funny yeah. that um, I think salespeople, I can't remember the statistics exactly, but salespeople and political leaders kind of rank the same for, for distrust statistically in North America. Um, likely exactly for the reason that you said, Diane, is because people have had some bad experience with somebody who doesn't know how to sell, who just focuses on themselves and just focuses on yeah. making money, which is totally the wrong perspective. Um, yeah. In terms of like, you know, natural being people, people being natural at sales, like if you're in business, you're a salesperson, you know, you may go by the title of coach or consultant, maybe you're a baker, maybe you're a hat maker, maybe you're a yoga instructor, instructor or a designer or a videographer. Um, but deep down, like you need to learn how to sell inside your business because the only way that you can sustain your message is by making money for yourself. Um, yeah. And, you know, most people, this is an issue is that most people rather, I mean, me too, like I rather have somebody walk up to me and pay me for my service without having to do anything. <laughs> That'd be amazing, right? Yeah, it like, would. Yeah. How great would that be? It's just, 
it's not how it works. And whether you, you want to learn sales or not, you've, you've got to put it as a priority. And this is where most people flounder. Like they think that they need to go learn tons of different tools and take tons and tons of courses. And oh yeah, you have to learn how to sell. Like, um, and everyone can learn how to sell. And it's simply having the mindset to do so. And, and then the strategy and the script and like all that stuff to execute, right? Okay, cool. That was the second part of my question. Can people learn? So, which I, I agree with. And I, I think they have to get out of their own way. They have to realize that they really don't know what selling is all about so they can be open to learning about how to really do it. Totally. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Here's another one. Mm-hmm. Um, introverts. Uh-huh. Uh I have an opinion about this. I'm Ooh. curious about where you, you mm-hmm, where you fall down. Um, <laughs> can they be good at selling? Yes. Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. So I believe that as well. You do? Okay, amazing. I do. Yeah, nice. So I'd love to hear, yeah, what you think. So my, my position on this is, you know, we've got a spectrum of introverted and extroverts. So it's not just like one person falls into the rabbit hole or the other. Um, yeah. But both can be really great at selling. And some of my most successful clients have are introverts and the reason for this is because they're great listeners like incredible yeah. listeners and a lot of the time the ego is totally put aside so there's that level of leadership and also this really interesting ability to observe the behavior of the person that they're talking to um, so they're really really great at showing up fully for their clients in a sales conversation and and um, definitely like undermined, I would say. Like a lot of people think that if they're introverted, they can't sell, but I'm actually an introvert um, primarily. Like I have extroverted tendencies and I've learned those behaviors, but at the end of the day, like I'm not looking to go be in a group of people to recharge my batteries. I like want to be alone with the book, you know? So it's, um, yeah, yeah. so they, they can be really incredible. What, what, uh, what's your take on this? So I completely agree with you. I think that the reason why introverts don't think that they, would be good at sales is, is because they think sales means they have to be talking and yeah. they don't want to, they don't want to focus on themselves, yeah. which is what makes them really good at it. When you say to them, the great thing is you shouldn't be talking. So <laughs> yeah. ask a question and yeah. shut up and listen <laughs> and just engage in a conversation. And they love that. Yeah. Oh That's yeah. That's their natural yeah. bent. Right. So yeah. 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 It is the natural state, right? It's like, if you like yeah. listening, if you're an introvert who doesn't like talking to people, like get into sales because all you have to do, I mean, <laughs> business and all you have to do is listen. You're right. You're so right. Just ask a question and then listen. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. So you mentioned before about mindset. Yeah. And um, I, I'd like you to go, uh, you know, talk a little more about um, how much of sales is really having the right mindset and why mindset matters so much? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a huge part of selling. And I'd say like 75% or higher is mindset. Um, and the reason I say this is because your own personal beliefs and connection and relationship with money in your own life is going to directly impact how you sell, like how you show up with confidence on a sales call, how you show up with commitment and conviction in the service that you're selling, whether it's your own or whether you're, whether you're selling for somebody else. Um, you know, you have to know that you're deserving to make money just for yourself outside of a sales conversation and that money matters um, or else it's going to be hella hard to sell a program in any capacity. So you know, if you've got a lot of limiting beliefs around money or, and you're an entrepreneur and you haven't exceeded a fine, if you've been at a financial cap or maybe you're even dipping, like a lot of the time these beliefs, like somebody told you at some point, something limiting around money, whether it's like, you know, a lot of limiting beliefs are like, it's hard to make great money. Um, money doesn't grow on trees. Only like rich people who have money are bad people. Like you hear all these kind of um, stories that we tell ourselves, right? And, and somebody implanted that in your head. It's not like you were born as a baby and you're like, this is my belief system. Like, this is, <laughs> this is what I'm going to carry into the world, right? Like, you were shaped by people for years and years in your life. And um, that has to be unlearned. Like, you have to unlearn that relationship with money, especially as a business owner and entrepreneur, so that you can relearn it and then be able to execute and serve and show up um, in a sales conversation for somebody and that really like unlearning those poor behaviors and like the relationship with money that's non-serving 
is really the massive part of selling. And then you can start to introduce like the strategy and the scripts and like how to overcome objections and, and you know, all that stuff that mindsets matter. Wow. That's so interesting. As I was listening to you, I was thinking, boy, I know so many people who will say that they um, don't know how to price their service or their program or whatever it is Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. because they really somewhere in them don't think that it's worth people giving them money for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like asking themselves the questions like, who am I? Am I good enough? Can I be paid this? Like who's going to pay me for this? And they may be sitting on like, multiple degrees, multiple like credentials, like tons of, you know, decades of experience, but then they have this total imposter syndrome, but there's a gap, right? It doesn't make sense for what's on paper to like what, what it is that they believe in themselves, but that's belief systems. And then they get held up, like you said, about the simplest thing, like pricing an offer. And that's really deep rooted in like, how did, what's their relationship with money? Like, do they think that they deserve to make, you know, X amount of dollars that that's really what, where people get hung up selling and and pricing and all of that stuff relating to money. Yeah, because then even if they go with what maybe the marketplace says should be the price, if they don't believe that, they're not going to be able to sell it. Oh my gosh, no. Like, and and especially if they're going into, to, you know, looking at the market as in what are other, like it's comparitis. It's like, oh, they're charging this and they're charging this. Like, there is zero measure of their own personal value in that. It's like, okay, how do I, as in they're like, how do I fit into this scale? But am I good enough? Yeah. So like, no matter how many people they look at, they're just like, oh, I can't compare to this person because they've done A, B, C. So they just opt themselves out. And that's really all around their belief systems and they're sabotaging themselves. And I mean, there's tons of different layers to this, right? In terms of like yeah. you know, hiding, hiding behind not pricing and not asking for money. Like it's, it's a lack of confidence and competence. Like they just haven't learned the skill set. Like going back to kind of the beginning of our conversation, they haven't learned the skill set to sell. So then they haven't learned like the actual process. And so they can't be competent because they haven't even, or confident because they haven't learned the competence to be able to execute. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a hard thing? Do you think is that hard for people to overcome or um, is there really a, like a system that they can walk themselves through that will, get yeah. where they need to be like overcome their limiting beliefs about money yeah. yeah 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 oh totally you can overcome it I mean like I you know bless my parents like I grew up in a household where like there's a lot of limiting beliefs around money right like as most households are like you're yeah I came from a my parents are baby boomers like it's a different mindset and so anybody who's come from that kind of environment and even if you haven't come from that environment like you you've likely at some point in your life been exposed to a scarcity mindset of like we don't have enough of money yeah. right we don't have enough money right. um you can 100 percent unlearn it like our brains are not designed to be in a fixed position we're always growing that's why when we get put into like a mundane if we get into repetition over and over and over again whether that's like whether that's a workout um, and you do the same thing over and over again, or whether you eat the same thing for lunch every single day, like it becomes so boring and like we're not designed to stay fixed. Our brains and our neurons and our cells are always, always changing. So you can hundred percent unlearn this. And I think the first, the first step is to really be self-aware that you don't know what you don't know. And there's something holding you back. If you're not making the money that you want in your business, there is a gap between what it is that you want and what you're actually doing, right? So it's um, the self-awareness to recognize that like, hey, there's there's something up here and and maybe it's me, like taking that ownership. Maybe it's me. It's not just like nobody wants to work with me. Maybe it's my shit, <laughs> like, right. my shit that I need to work <laughs> through first, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can totally. Yeah. It, it's very easy to start to work on that. It just takes the self-awareness and the willingness to do it. Yeah, I would think, think, you know, Dr. Phil says you cannot change what you don't acknowledge. So yeah. I, I think, you know, <laughs> once you acknowledge that it's you, yeah. then, yeah, it, it, it's, it's uh, probably goes much quicker. So yeah. um, if you had one piece of advice to give a new entrepreneur, mm-hmm. someone just venturing into this fabulous world, <laughs> what would it be? Hmm. My, my piece of advice would be to be responsive instead of reactive. 
So ah, I love that. Yeah. So learn, like learn how to sell right out the gates instead of waiting until you're at the end of your rope, thinking about getting a part-time job or a full-time job or thinking that you can't go on because you're struggling and just learn, like learn sales right off the hop as like a priority. Um, and then I guess the part two of that is like, is setting boundaries in place to say no to the to people and the events and the things that don't light you up. And so you can put your time and energy where it matters most. So, you know, being responsive as in like taking yourself into that place and saying, okay, what needs to be addressed instead of being reactive and saying, oh, this is like, I'm being pushed out of necessity to make this change. Um, just put the stuff in place right away. And then it makes your life a whole, a whole lot easier. That's so great. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it just simplifies everything, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it does. I know we complicate this stuff and, and make it so much harder than it really has to be. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think we as like a human race are good at, at overcomplicating things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. It's so silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is so great. Will you tell the listeners, you know, how they can, find you and what you've got going on please yeah for sure so i you can find me on instagram s c mentoring um so you like silly cat mentoring <laughs> that just popped <laughs> into my head you're welcome and um then i have real business real talk my community of female entrepreneurs online um we get all into the bits of you know mindset and selling and all that good stuff um, so if you're in service, in the service-based industry, you're more than welcome to pop over and join that community um, and get some support from us. We've got a bunch of badass ladies in there. And, um, and then, of course, my, my website is www.shaylinecameron.com. You're more than welcome to jump over there. And uh, you can find me in all those places. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me and sharing this information. I thought it was fabulous. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you, Diane. It's awesome to be here and chat with your audience. And uh, yeah, I'm just very grateful. Yeah, wonderful. And what, speaking of the audience, I'd like to thank them too, because they are uh, why we do this thing. Yes. As well as the sponsor, if you would like to get a free trial of audible.com, go to, oh, and a free audiobook, uh, go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up. As always, Remember to um, prosper and be curious. I think I actually just said that backwards. <laughs> and until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Pip, 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 Powder Donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh, man. That's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry. I'm going to need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus. The Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool. Only from Progressive. The owl and afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. We are Jackie Clayton and Katie Van Horn, co-hosts of the Inclusive AF Podcast. We're two diversity, equity, and inclusion peeps who love both what we have in common and what makes us different. During the day, we use our superpowers to block bias and break down systems that are inequitable within companies and create inclusive AF places to work. We're also BFFs who have tough conversations about our different lived experience. Come have a listen and learn something new.